Hey guys, so I got a pretty cool little thing here. I finished the seat latch using uh, SV650 goodies. So stick around, I'll show you what I did to make that. Got the tray all lined out and welded. That's my first time doing silica bronze and it actually looks really, really good. So as of now, I'm going to start doing more to lay out the tray and the first order of business I want to tackle is the seat release. So as I mentioned before, this is from a Suzuki SV650 and I just, I don't know how it compares to a lot of other ones. I just happen to have it in, you know, on the shelf, so to speak. So it's actually just over an inch tall or just under an inch tall, I should say. I'll have to trim this a little bit, but this is the position that I'm thinking and then the lock cylinder will go right here and I'm thinking I can make a just a single cable to go between the two with some uh, clamping ends on them and that'll keep that clean nice and short so what I'll have to do is I'm gonna start cutting a bar to go across here a piece of flat stock and then I'll drill holes for the seat portion to actually go through and clip in here and then I'll use these two holes to mount so I'm gonna start off and get a piece cut six and a half six and a quarter inches wide and then we'll bevel the edges and we'll get it we'll get it fitted so that's what I'm gonna start with okay so I've got my plate cut out it's a six and a quarter inches wide and I have it bevel on either end so it fits down flush on the tube and then I went ahead and made a another template you guys know I like these things to mimic every hole on the on the uh, latch here so that means I can lay it down on here and then I've gone ahead and I've center punched each of my whole centers that way I can go ahead and and drill it and I'll have all these marked out so I'm just gonna do a pilot hole for for these right off the bat just to kinda get them started and then I'm gonna do these in probably like a quarter inch uh, maybe a little bit bigger and I'm gonna tap these two uh, through the plastic for like an M8 bolt and that'll hold it up onto this plate. So here we go. So I'm working on the electronics tray and more specifically trying to think my way through this seat release mechanism and uh, try to show you what I'm what I'm working with here so you can see my thought process so I have already made the bracket to actually hold the release mechanism to the bike and it's just set on here right now so my concern is kind of doing like an order of operations where if I, you know, I want to make sure that whatever I mount in the tray doesn't affect me being able to weld or access or mount anything elsewhere in the tray. So, if I weld this in right here, then I have a really, you know, slim chance of being able to 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 precisely get the key or the actual lock cylinder mounted on here. So, what I'm going to do first is go ahead and mount the modified um, lock cylinder mount I just cut the tab off of it that holds the cable and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole and notch it for the uh, for this section right here you can see that little lock or that little um, guide pin so to speak whatever you want to call it anyway so I need to get this plate mounted on first and then I can go ahead and probably just weld this in weld that in solid and then you know normally you would use a cable on this but in this instance, uh, I'm trying to keep everything really compact, so it's gonna it's gonna sit just about like that, and you can see the the distance there is not not very much. So I'll end up making a uh, just a short cable that won't be sheathed at all, since it's not gonna be going around any bends. It's just gonna be a straight shot from there to there. I think that'll work fine. Now one concern. Uh, I have with welding that to a flat surface here is the sheet metal underneath warping 
Um, again, I'm new to I'm new to the TIG welding scene here, and just yesterday was my first time doing silica bronze. So I've been kind of practicing a little bit with uh, kind of a dummy sheet. Put a bend in it to kind of simulate the uh, simulate the electronics tray, and just practicing doing a few little few little pieces, and then clamping it down and practicing different techniques with cooling it. So I'm just trying to prevent warpage. So I think what I'm going to do. Um, I think I've got a, a method down, so I'm going to try to do just the just the corners of the piece instead of trying to lay a, an entire bead, which I think will be I think it'll be strong enough, and then hopefully we won't have any warpage. But I'm going to take every precaution I can to um, avoid said warpage. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, I'm going to start working on this now and. Hopefully it turns out good. No, it will. You guys think I have enough clamps on this thing? <laughs> Every precaution necessary. But I have that plate welded on there. As I mentioned, just the corners. So I cooled it off after every single little pass uh, and then started again. So hopefully Hopefully once I undo the clamps here in a few minutes it'll you know not be warped. But yeah, there it is. Alright, so the next order of business here is making the cable to join the two items here. So this is the factory cable that came with the uh, with the lock. So it already has you know two good ends on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use the uh, ball end here goes in there like that and then I'll end up just cutting cutting this and then I'll fabricate a new end to fit in the key the key side um, and I'm not gonna there's not gonna be any sheathing on it or anything like that because it shouldn't even contact anything once it's in here so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and I'll start making a new end Keeping this end, so let me just cut this back here. Marker, 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 marker. Who's got the big one? If you work in a shop much, you know that there's a good marker and you must you must find the good marker. Aha! Just hidden. Alright. So we have our end. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it past just a little bit. Uh, this is just quarter inch seal. I think it's like cold rolled, something like that. Doesn't really matter. It's what I have. Uh, this is how I make cable ends. And there's going to be a few of you that probably end up yelling at the computer screen or TV about how I'm doing it wrong and how the cable is going to break and stuff. That's fine. So, anyway, um, I'm going to center punch it. I'm going to drill through it, and that way the cable has a path to pass through. But I always leave extra, and then I just trim it back. So. I'm just going to aimlessly kind of throw a punch in here. And then I will start drilling.
be able to feed a cable through it, but not with much with much play in it. Alright. And then another step I do here is back in the vise. I end up throwing a countersink on here, in here, and that way I have a surface to weld to from the back. Just a little bit more access in there. and the camera would focus. I don't know. But from here, I'll cut it back a little bit. Um, I'll probably first work on trimming the, uh, the long side here and then I can clamp this end and then cut the back and, and whatnot. So we'll get it figured out. All right, so I've got my length. I have a mark here, and what I'll do is I'll slide this to the back side of that mark. I leave a little bit extra um, cable on here, and I'll fray the end of this out into that countersink that I made, and then from there I'm actually just going to weld it, and that should be very solid. Now, I've done other cables before without issue, and I'm really especially not worried about this one because it's just for a seat release. It's not under a whole lot of tension. And it's only going to be, you know, it's not like it's getting used constantly like a clutch cable or brake line or something like that. So this should be plenty strong. just giving it a slight downward pressure on the cable to kind of pull this uh, not like super tight but just to get it to where it's locked in there and then this doesn't spin either now try to clean it up as much as I can I've cleaned the cable I've cleaned this but still just a little bit extra Hopefully we can fill this and it'll be good.
that quick. See how it fits. I want to just try to set the camera up so I can be hands free and stop the uh, shakes for you guys. Probably gonna end up being a sequence for getting each of these in here. See in that hole there. Works good. So I won't be doing the um, seat pan just yet. Uh, I'm still going to work on kind of laying stuff out in here, and I have to build the battery tray. That's going to be probably later on today. Um, and then I'm still debating on how to do how to do the seat pan. My style usually just it's it's a single piece and it lays on top the tube and then we upholster around that instead of having like a piece of fiberglass or something like that. But this one I'm probably going to do or we are going to do a little fiberglass hump here. So I have to decide if I want to do the seat and the cowl as one piece where you pop the whole thing off and then it's your battery here or if I want to do like just a removable seat section and leave the cowl here. So um, I have yet to decide and then I'm still working on the brake light and I think what I'm going to end up doing is just going all out and doing a flush mount LED in here. That's going to be the cleanest way to do it and it'll, you know, kind of challenge me to keep making like really precision parts. So anyway, seat latch is done. <laughs> 